Hey y'all, I'm Laura with Hot Fan Media and today I'm going to be working on a 2016 F-250 clock spring airbag detector issue. Let's get to it. Okay, so if your airbag light is on and you've pulled the code or a dealership or an auto shop has pulled the code for you and they're telling you that it is a failure in your clock spring, this is actually a very common issue, common enough that Ford has sent out a recall. This recall affects these years and these models. Where the progression of this recall is, the dealerships don't have this part. Um, they have not been sent out and the second letter has not been sent out. That second letter was supposed to be sent out in the first quarter, but we're almost out of the first quarter if you're watching this when it posts. There's no guarantee that it'll come out anytime soon. I had one guy tell me that they're just recommending that customers down the vehicle. That means like just setting the vehicle aside until the recall pushes through. So if you don't want to wait around for Ford's mystery date on when they'll get their clock springs in, you can go ahead and do it yourself. We will have this part linked down in the description below. As per usual, this is a module wiring issue, relatively easy to fix. You are going to need to have a little bit of mechanic know-how because it is taking the entire steering wheel off. Beyond that, it's a pretty cut and dry procedure, not that difficult. Okay, so very first thing we're gonna do is take the battery off. Certain models will actually have two batteries in the engine compartment, so you wanna make sure that you do not have one on the driver's side and or the passenger side. This one only has one, so we're good to go there. You wanna take the battery off anytime you're unplugging anything electrical, especially anything that has to deal with airbags. It's recommended that you let the battery sit for five minutes before you unplug anything. In general, it's fine to take off just one connector. I'm gonna take off both because I'm paranoid and I don't wanna die early because I got hit in the face with an airbag. So I'm gonna take off both. Okay, we are using an eight millimeter socket. You can take a microfiber cloth or just a rag and lay it on top of that terminal so that it doesn't pop back up and touch the terminal and give you electricity and make you die. Just to give a quick overview of what's about to happen here, um, we're gonna pop this trim piece off. We're going to unbolt this piece of trim and pop these two parts off. Then there's some squares in the back that we have to pry open. Then this will come off then the steering wheel will come off. We'll take the old part out, put the new part in, steering wheel goes back on, cover goes back on, these two go back on, and then this goes back on. First part is this piece. It's not bolted or anything, so I'm just gonna take my trim tool and pop it out. I can't see what I'm doing. Next thing is three screws right here. So I'm using a 732nd socket. Just gonna loosen that. Okay, you just kinda have to pull a little bit. Okay, so there are three of these squares and there's one on the opposite side. That right there is a clip and you're just trying to pry under it and pop it out. When you're trying to get this part out, these are what you're pushing on. You're actually taking your screwdriver and bending them back because this is what they're hanging on to. So from the back end, you're actually just pushing them off of these like this. You're pushing them back. So what I found was most useful or helpful was I was able to get these two off. These two are the easiest to get to. And then you could pull it out enough to where it was staying out on its own. And then you get behind this one, which is kind of hard to get to, and it all pops off. I have stuck a screwdriver in between that hook and uh, what the hook holds on to. So I'm going to leave that screwdriver there and I'm going to repeat that for the other two. But the other two are harder to get to. It's just going to take a little bit of time. I know the battery is not plugged in, but I am paranoid. This is, this is your airbag. So I'm going to kind of sit where my body is not directly going to be impacted if it does deploy. So I'm just going to kind of sit away from it. So we've got some plugs in here. We're going to unplug this one and we're going to unplug that one. So I'm just going to pinch these, give it a little bit of slack and pull it out. So I'm just going to get behind it, pull it out. 
and we're gonna set this aside now we're gonna unplug this one then we're going to get a torque screw bit and unscrew this this is a t50 bit it took two people to break it loose and a breaker bar with a nice long handle okay this is our clock spring part that we're replacing we're gonna take out these four torque screws right here and we are working with a t10 bit so i can't use my drill because i can't get straight on it that's sad we are going to unplug this plug right here that might be a little easier before you take the screws out but i kind of wanted something to hold it in okay so this is the old part my module came out with the steering angle sensor stuck to the back of it i've watched a couple of videos and none of them said that that was an issue but it actually has this wire plug in the back so you want to make sure that that goes back on so now we're going to stick the new part on and you're going to want to leave this pin in it has some guides around these little posts it's a little bit difficult but it's got to slide on all of them but now we're going to put the tiny little screws back in i always like to start it at an angle so that it doesn't pop off all right and then we're going to plug this back into the bottom now we're going to put our steering wheel on and you're going to keep that tab in Okay, now you wanna go outside of the vehicle and make sure the wheels are straight before you screw this down. Okay, now that I've just got this snug, now I'm gonna take the tab out. You get your finger behind it and kind of make sure you're not pulling the module with you and not uh, damaging it. And we're gonna plug this back in and we're going to torque it to 35 foot pounds. And I got that information from Pro Demand. 35 foot pounds is not much, but you're gonna need another person to kind of hold it while you torque it down. And yeah, make sure it's straight on. We are going to take our airbag and put it back on and I'm gonna slide away from it again. So I'm gonna stick this one that we took off last back on first. And then we're gonna put this one on. And then we're going to just slide it back on. We are going to stick this part back on first. I uh, pull. I pulled this down to get to those um, clips in the back. So okay. Then we're just gonna snap them back together. Don't quite understand what it's hung up on. Okay. Okay, screws back in. I always like to hand start them so that you don't strip anything out. We're gonna pop the last piece of trim back on. Okay, it has to cradle, it has to cradle this. So you're gonna have to slide it up and then back down. Here comes the scary part. Uh, now we put the battery back on and see if it blows up. I'm gonna start with the hot. And uh, I just kind of like to hammer on it a little bit with the edge. You want to make sure it is down all the way. And we're going to move on to our negative battery cable. So now we're going to crank it and make sure that the airbag light has gone off. I will put the key in and keep my body away from the airbag and uh, then crank it. <laughs> And you can see that the airbag light is off, which is wonderful. And that's it. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribe, and maybe send it to somebody who you know is experiencing this issue. As always, we will try to answer as many questions as we can in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again in the shop.